Hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. Recently, we have been focusing on the process of de-dollarization. We talked about what's driving it as well as what's going on behind the scenes. In this context, we're seeing a major transformation taking place in the world of finance and economics. The world is changing at a rapid pace, and if you feel that I might be exaggerating, just think about the scale and the pace with which central bank digital currencies are being launched and piloted across the world. There are 114 countries that are pursuing CBDCs actively. Think about the most recent banking crisis, which most likely is far from being over. Over, and of course, the ideas and the plans that unite BRICS nations, for example, those are the events that are shaping the new world. There's yet another interesting development that may not have a direct impact on the United States economy just yet, but it is one of those important red flags that um, typically have ripple effects. Let me know, by the way, if you are interested in this type of contact, if you want to see more content like this on my channel, you can do so by liking this video. It is absolutely free for you to subscribe. And if you click on that little bell button, you will get notified when I upload a new video. It has been reported that Russia and Iran are not just planning to, but are actively taking steps to develop a gold-backed stablecoin. Why is this important, you might be thinking. On the surface, it might not have anything to do with the United States directly, but the use of an alternative payment system in the future will make it extremely difficult for the United States to sanction or to have that global influence that it is currently enjoying. This will impact the entire current global financial transfer system, and it will change the world's economic structure as we know it. A gold-backed stablecoin is actually something that has been in the works for a while, and effectively, the two countries are looking to increase their cross-border trade and to find an alternative to SWIFT, a global banking settlement system that has been disconnected due to sanctions. In this case, both countries plan to use digital currencies. For those who might not be too familiar with what a stablecoin is, stablecoins bridge the worlds of cryptocurrency and fiat currency because their prices are actually pegged to a reserve asset such as gold. The structure dramatically reduces their volatility, which makes them an appealing alternative. The article then goes on to say that the Central Bank of Iran is discussing with Russia the possibility of creating a token that could replace the US dollar, Russian ruble, and Iranian rial in foreign trade payments. The token would be backed by gold, meaning that it would technically function as a stablecoin. Before we continue, a quick reminder to check out our sponsor, ExpressVPN. I use it every single day. It is so important to make sure that your personal information is safe and fully protected. You can claim three full months of free service, absolutely free service, when you sign up using the link shared in the video description below. Both countries, Russia and Iran, have to have legislation to launch this type of a new currency. They are expected to have it in place by the end of this year, by the third quarter of this year, I believe, which we can assume would be the timing of when the stablecoin may be launched. Russian media is reporting that this new stablecoin will be used in Astrakhan, a region that is already receiving shipments directly from Iran. To be clear, the Russian-Iran stablecoin is not part of the BRICS plan. As we talked about just a couple of days ago, BRICS nations are actively working on developing a new digital currency that would be acceptable for all five member nations and will be used for cross-border trade. The Chinese Yuan is most likely going to be the currency that they agree upon, but at this time, no official announcements have been made. As you can see, de-dollarization is a trend that is rapidly gaining momentum with multiple countries around the world. The majority of these countries could be technically described as the global south versus the global west. Countries are seeking to decrease their dependency on the United States. Even if you look at the volume of China-Russia trade, for example, it's increased 80-fold, a dramatic increase since January of 2022. 
Within the context of BRICS plans, the Chinese Yuan appears to be a viable alternative, even though the country's lack of transparency and its political environment pose the biggest obstacles. In addition to that, China has rules that make it very, very hard to sell yuan for foreign currencies. With that being said, China represents around 20% of the world's economy and about 15% of world exports. So countries have plenty of reasons to use the yuan, or at least to use it as a temporary tool um, that allows them to move away from the dollar. It should also be mentioned that countries are seeking to reduce their dependency on the dollar, not just by creating new currencies. Central banks, especially in Russia and China, have been buying gold, they have been stockpiling gold at the fastest pace since 1967. So as you can see here, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, data shows that due to high inflation and geopolitical uncertainty, central banks bought a record 1,136 tons of gold in 2022 alone. De-dollarization isn't just something that China, Russia, and Iran are actively pursuing. It is a theme in other parts of the world. For example, recently Brazil and Argentina have discussed the creation of a common currency for the top two largest economies in South America. The UAE and India are in talks to use rupees to trade non-oil commodities in order to distance themselves from the West. And also Malaysia, for example, have recently begun using the Indian rupee to settle certain trades. And most importantly, for the first time in 48 years, Saudi Arabia said that it is open to trade in currencies besides the United States dollar. We know that they have already started to accept the Chinese Yuan. This shift toward diversification of financial assets of currency has started, and although it won't result in an overnight change, it's already posing a serious threat to the American reserve currency. 22 foreign central banks still hold about 60% of their foreign exchange reserves denominated in US dollars. So the possibility of it collapsing overnight is a remote one. Remember that simply replacing the fiat currency of the largest economy in the world with the fiat currency of smaller economies is not a realistic option. It's just not going to happen. Quite possibly, this is where central bank digital currencies would be used to move forward with de-dollarization. Maybe that is why China has become a leader in CBDC adoption. If the United States dollar does lose its value over time as the result of the de-dollarization process that has already begun, it will truly change the financial system and the economy here domestically. The US government spending would be reduced as the United States would find it very difficult to service its own debt. In addition to that, a weak dollar would bring hyperinflation and higher average inflation in the long run along with higher taxes. There's no doubt that the United States dollar, whether in its traditional form or a digital form, will exist. But a more important question is, what role will it play globally and how valuable will it be? If de-dollarization efforts do gain even more traction, there could be serious implications for the United States economy, um, its ability to sanction, and also its economic leadership globally. I will go ahead and end the video here. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please show your support, give it a like, subscribe to my channel on YouTube and Rumble. I would love to have you back for my next one. And if you know someone who might find this information interesting, please share the video with them. I'll see you in my next one tomorrow. Take care.